Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. Sean Haney here with Real Agriculture and welcome to another episode of The Soil School. Today we're outside of Minton, Saskatchewan and we're visiting Derek and Tannis Axton of Axton Farms. Now there's farmers across Canada that really care about their soil and Axtons are no different. In fact, they take it to a whole other level. Their, their company tagline is loyal to the soil. Let's go find out how. Um, loyal to the soil, the reason I like is it kind of, it reminds us that everything we do affects the soil, whether it's good or bad. I mean, we are a cropping system, so we are taking, um, but we always want to make sure we're giving back. So before any operation we do on our farm, we consider how is this going to affect the soil? Because we want to be as loyal as we can, which we end up, you know, herbicides, you know, there's different things that you do that aren't always benefiting the soil. Um, but then we think, what can we do, you know, to minimize that or to have as, you know, less impact or destruction as possible. So like low disturbance seeding, you know, we try not to, you know, when we go out there, we try not to mess up too much. Uh, we, we've been working on reducing inputs over time, you know, and trying to find that balance between um, being productive and not having a mess and, you know, and seeing how far we can push this, you know, reducing the the inputs, um, intercropping, obviously, which has been one of the tools for reducing inputs. Oh, we've been control traffic now for quite a few years, trying to, same thing, it's back to the water infiltration holding capacity thing, and I'm still, we, we don't know, but we haven't seen downsides, but we, you know, it, it, it does, it does appear to be helping um, soil structure. Um, yeah, our headlands uh, actually, um, that's a down, unfortunate downside of control traffic is our headlands actually take an extra bit of beating just because of the way the, the nature of the beast. You know, because of the sort of nature of control traffic being um, square and even and we, we've, we will put pollinator strips along the edge just to sort of make up that two or three feet of whatever there is along the edge that don't work out and even passes and then we'll put 60 feet on the, on the headlands for, for turning and access and, you know, pollinator habitat and it's you know, it's funny, we just really don't notice a difference in productivity on the fields, but it's, it's sure it's noticeable, like the, the access, and, and when you go out and check, what you find in those strips uh, is, always, is always good. And um, Yeah, using stripper headers or cutting the crop as high as we can to leave as much residue as possible. When I think of soil, you know, back when we started farming, I thought of it as more like, I mean, it was dirt. That's how we thought of it. But since I've learned how to look at the soil under a microscope, I think of it as life and all this living, all these living creatures and basically the soil is their home. So whether it's, you know, keeping the soil covered, it's protecting them or having, you know, diverse rotation or diverse crops out at one time, it's offering them more food so that there's more activity, more nutrient cycling. So everything we do, we just think about, yeah, how it's affecting the microorganisms' home. Yeah, better aggregation for, you know, yeah. you know, air exchange and water infiltration. So all of those things. Um, we do, I mean, we do make a little bit of compost and, and we sort of target that on specific areas. Um, instead of using kind of salt-based, you know, fertilizer, we've, we kind of use sort of a, I don't know, I guess biological food sort of type of approach along with sort of a, a nutrient balancing a program that we use that, that you know like along with our, with our sap analysis that's how we make our changes is in our starter blend in the spring okay so what 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 changes have you seen to the soil profile since we really got into this slogan um we've seen significant changes in soil aggregation um water infiltration so we, we check that that's something that we there's a way you can measure it it's relatively simple with a, a ring and some water and some saran wrap <laughs> but we, we we do that and like in our, our better fields now like the first inch is sort of 10 seconds 15 seconds and the second inch is four or five minutes which in the, there again when we do get our, our rain sometimes that's how it comes and and it's it's sometimes it's not how much rain you get it's how much you keep it's sort of like you know we talk about farming and money it's not how much you, you make it's how much you keep <laughs> and that's been a big and i mean obviously there's room for improvement but you know that's when we when we ex, you know try a new practice or try a new thing we, we just sort of see does it make it better or does it make it worse i mean that's really all we can do there's, there's, 
this is not something that we measure down to the third decimal point. It's just, is this making it better or worse? And then we do more of that. We spend a lot of time with a shovel and looking at the soil. And because changes are slow, actually we had a photographer here, it was a few years ago now, and we were digging in our soil. She said, well, go grab, you know, some soil from, you know, a piece of land that's newer to you. So we just went across the highway because we had bought that one not too long ago. And something we had never done before. And we compared the two. And it was unbelievable the difference just in color alone, let alone the structure. Um, so, you know, it is a slow change, so we don't always see it, but definitely change in color. Um, we've had a good start to spring moisture, so we've seen, you know, a lot of worms, more worms than we've ever seen on our farm. Earthworms. Earthworms, yeah. Yeah, they just show us that we're getting a more fully functional soil food web. I guess also, too, I, I always joke about the secret to happiness is low expectations. <laughs> So the, the first year or two, I mean, and you're gonna have disasters. And if you're not comfortable with disasters, you know, it's just, but, I, but I, I live on the other end of that spectrum. If I'm not having a disaster, I'm not pushing hard enough. You know, that's because I live by the, it's one crop one year and I have 30 crops or 35 crops left. And we have a lot to, we have, a, well, but, but you know, <laughs> it's sort of been like, that's kind of our, where we think. And we have a lot to figure out in 35 crops. So. You know, that's why we try to try as many things as we can each year and, and see where, where the holes are and, and see where the winds are and, and, and go that direction. We don't grow the same crops every year. We don't do the same thing every year. We're totally adapting, trying new things. And yeah, it makes it a lot more exciting and fun. And yeah, sometimes it's a disaster, but a lot of times it's a big win, which is, that's exciting. Can you be loyal to the soil and still drive yields but most importantly financial profitability absolutely you know and i and i think that it's it, it's sort of a, a, a like a bell curve i think it gets the, the farther you go the better it gets and it, it's and it takes time um but yeah i think the answer to that's absolutely you can do you can do both obviously everybody likes to talk about yield and we've really tried to change the focus to profitability we've even like we've made like kind of conscious choices to grow or maybe, I don't want to say lower yielding, but higher value crops. And sometimes they tend to be lower yielding, just because of the nature of the things. But for us, it's about, I mean, if we can maximize profitability, you know, above what we would have grown in a conventional scenario, that's still a win. I mean, and if we can do that with less inputs and, and you know, when we look at our, our, you know, the outcomes of like plant sap analysis and soil tests, organic matter increases and water infiltration increases, if those things can all happen Co and coincide then that's um we know we're going in the right direction and i think those things are all possible